gospel lesson today is from Mark 10, 46 through 52. Jesus heals the blind beggar, Bartimaeus. And they came to Jericho, and as Jesus was leaving Jericho with the disciples and a great multitude, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, Bartimaeus began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked Bartimaeus, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called him, saying, Take heart, rise, Jesus is calling to you. And throwing off his mantle, Bartimaeus sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And he replied, Teacher, let me receive my sight. And Jesus said, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. Immediately Bartimaeus received his sight and followed Jesus on the way. May God add understanding to this reading of the Gospel. Glory to the Maker. That had already been done at the beginning of the gospel. 
The episode is set near the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. Early in the chapter, we find the story of the rich young man, the account of James and John asking special favors, and Jesus' third prediction of his passion and death. Jesus was on his way to crucifixion, and this is the final healing miracle that he did, according to Mark. Now the story is told, how the story is told, tells us of Mark's purpose in writing it. The blind beggar perceived something those closest to Jesus couldn't see. Bartimaeus called him master the first time in Mark's gospel. And the Lord is addressed in that way. Bartimaeus proclaimed him Jesus, son of David, before the, the crowds upon Sunday ever used that title. Bartimaeus glorified God and inspired others to give glory. Faith and praise, even from someone considered an outsider, makes a person whole and gives them confidence. Mark's depiction of the disciples makes plain they didn't still understand what it was all about or why they were going to Jerusalem. James and John's request resulted in a quarrel among the disciples. They showed an uncaring, even nasty attitude toward the blind man trying to seek the great physician. Mark's depiction showed even long-time people that followed Jesus getting in the way of God's power and purpose when blinded by merely human vision. But the persecuted, the Gentile church for which Mark wrote, would have also heard it as a message of hope that outsiders are included in the kingdom of God, that God's purpose is accomplished even on the way to the cross, and that those who are broken may still lead others to faith. Today, Mark's perspective offers encouragement to Christians anxious about the future and tempted to close ranks against a sometimes hostile environment. Like Bartimaeus, we are called to risk everything to proclaim the gospel. Relying on God's promises rather than on um, visible evidence. We are all blind or broken in some way. But by the grace of God, we can be healed and used to the glory of God. Like the disciples, we too do not always understand the mission we have been called to do. Like the outsiders, we too need to know that we are included as total and complete children of God. Creations in God's own image, LGBTQIA people, people who have been left out of the Christian church for way too long, but have never been left out of God's plan. Like the early players in Mark's story, we too are called to realize that God works at all times and in all places and through all people. No matter where we are on our journeys, when we are full of faith and we feel left out of God's plan, God is there working with us and through us to accomplish God's plan for salvation for all people. All people. And when we feel alone and hopeless, God is there working through us and with us to accomplish God's plan of salvation for all people. All people. We are included. Celebrate and give praise to God for that inclusion. For far too long, Christian churches, and still yet Christian churches, divide people up and separate people and use people, well, let's be honest, most of the time they use people to raise money. Maybe that's a good idea. Maybe I should pick out some group of people and start saying, you all need to dislike these people. I don't like them. And maybe I can get a new Cadillac or something. But see, that's not the way God works. In the last few weeks, we've talked about this. We've talked about what is it that's really worthwhile in our lives? What is it that's really worthwhile in our lives as we travel along each day? Sometimes I don't know why Spirit of Peace is here. And then, as soon as I think I don't know, I'll get an email or a phone call or somebody will show up and will say, you don't know how you all in that church changed my life. And often, I 
told you the story before, we in our church, our pastor of the church in the Quad Cities, and when it burned, we called him fire on 79. That week, I got so many phone calls, and when we went to a fundraiser at the bar with the drag queens, threw together real quick for their church, they had never set foot in the doors. And people came up to me and cried and said, Pastor, what are we going to do? Our church is burned. And I thought, our church? I don't even know who you are. <laughs> but we were their church because we were open to everybody. I think Spirit of Peace has that same reputation. We're open to everybody. They may not take advantage of it, and that's okay. They may not show up and sit in the chairs, and that's okay. We're called to do the work of God, not to be rewarded for doing the work of God. And that's something that's hard to get over. You think, why don't they appreciate me? You think they appreciated Jesus? He was on his way to the cross, and he healed a blind man. I know he had more on his mind. And notice, while he healed the blind man, he didn't get the dirt and the spittle and rub in his eyes. He didn't say, go take a bath in the pool of Scotland. He didn't say, you know, you have to repeat this ten times or go to the temple and give an offering. He just said, you're healed. Okay, let's get on with life now. And the blind man could see it immediately. Never forget, never, never, never forget where you are on your journey and where you're going. We're not going to the cross. We're going to the resurrection. That's a repeat from last week, by the way. We're on our way. We're on the journey. And what happens on that journey is very important. And when we get at the end of that journey, it will just be us. Us as individuals, standing in front of God. And what a joy it will be. Just think, you know, the Rainbow Bridge, I love that one. Just think, since we have a lot of animal lovers in here, how much or how happy you're going to be, you're going to sing praises and do a little jig probably. When you get to the end, you get to the edge of that Rainbow Bridge and you see every animal you have meet you. Probably knock you down on the ground and cover you up, that makes me with some of you. There'll be mini dogs all over <laughs> Tammy and Regina. I'll have lots of cats and dogs, all wiggling their butts and their tails, wanting to kiss you and you wanting to kiss them. The joy you'll have. Think how much more the joy will be when you see people that are gone together. What a happy time. That's where we're headed. It makes no difference what happens to us here. It's where we get to. So celebrate today. Sing. Open your eyes. See the majesty of God and the miracles of God all around you. They are here. They are here. God is present. Sometimes I wish we didn't have the Old Testament history. Because we think, no, God did all kinds of things back then. God still does all those things. Probably even in a bigger and glorious way than they were done. Because they had some great story tellers back then. And somebody will tell our story someday. And they'll make it even more glorious than we thought it was. Celebrate. Celebrate. And give praise to God this day. Amen.